Um, let's finish this one off, guys. Um, so, for the last step, for the last step, uh, what you want to do is use a uh, small brush, small brush, so number eight, number eight round brush uh, is what I'm using. Doesn't matter, just as just a general small brush, okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting in the buildings in the back, and I'm going to color in all the buildings pretty much. I'm going to treat all these buildings as just one big shape in the background, just one big shape, but. We're also leaving, see on, on, the, on the reference photo, there are some little bits of highlights. See, like here, this orangey section there, like kind of the light hitting the right-hand side of the buildings. So you've got to cut around those bits. So I'm going to just pick up, really, I don't know what color this is. It's just a cool color, a bit of blue, a bit of gray, a bit of... Um, brown okay just picking it up um, the consistency of this color just has to be it's kind of like a coffee kind of consistency almost like a milk milk coffee kind of consistency so you, you want this color to be darker than significantly darker than the sky okay and I'm just gonna go in I'm gonna just maybe start like here test it out that's okay. And uh, start working in here. Get little, little bits of the building showing through. Top part of the building, uh, the dome, like that. Uh, you got to really be careful with this dome because it's, uh, you know, being a Venice kind of scene, you, you want to preserve that dome, make it look like a dome at least. Yeah, give it a try. Yeah. So I'm just, it's almost like a gray color that I'm using for all these background, um, these background buildings. But I'm leaving a bit of that warmth as well on the right hand side of the building. Sometimes I grab that tissue if I'm like, oh, you know, shouldn't have done that. I'll pick up that tissue, dab off that area and uh, crisis avoided like that. So, you know, I'm just looking at how to put in these buildings the most simple way possible. Just the silhouette of those buildings, okay? That. That. Top of that d little dome like this, maybe. And then I'm always thinking, let's, I'm trying to touch the paper as little as possible. I'm going to paint the dome. I'm thinking, how many, how, how can I do this with just a few brush strokes so that it, can't, it still looks fresh? Okay. Notice I sort of go in sometimes. I sort of uh, put my thumb in there and lift off a bit of paint or whatever. Okay. So the important thing is like you're leaving a bit of that warm color that we uh, put in before a little bit of that warm color and just make up maybe something here yeah. these kind of uh what do you call them the Just lost my words for a second. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
entrance of the building, little poles. Okay. Um, so, considering the light source is coming from like the right hand side of the painting, um, I'm leaving just little bits of that light on the right hand side of the buildings. Yeah, yeah, have a look. If you want to come around, have a look. Yeah, it's like it's a, it's a fair bit of water, but like I'm making sure that it's pretty dark as well. See, like that. You always got to make sure that it's like, I'm trying to go as dark as possible, but still have it be transparent. Because, mm. you know, if you use the paint straight off like that, it's just it's yeah. too much. Yeah. It, it, um, yeah. it doesn't look natural. So, yeah, just something like that. Um, you know, preserve the light here on that side of the building. Then I'll get in the bottom of it here. You know, some type of like, you know, something like this here. I'm, in this, like, in my version, I'm probably putting more highlights than is actually in the reference. Making it a little bit, uh, the highlights are more exaggerated. But notice how it's just, I'm using literally one color, one color and one consistency of color through this entire thing. Okay, and cutting around, you gotta, the hardest thing I found was just having some, the self-control to leave out, um, yeah, just leave out the areas, just not paint some of the things, some of the orange bits, because it's, what you leave out of the painting is just as important as what you leave in. Okay, let's get this out the way, let's get this. Show on the road um, there. This building is darker here. I always have to try to slow myself down. I'm I'm very, I'm really impatient, and I always want to finish it as quick as possible. But take as long as you need to. You know, if you to get that shape in properly. going to cut around this boat and the figures inside the boat as well. Little people in the boat.
Okay. Um, so, almost done with those buildings. Just a little bit of colour back there. Top part of these other ones as well. Tiny little details. Um, that's what these little brushes are good for. They're great for small details. Because um, using the bigger brushes to get in all the washes, all the um, bits and pieces, all the large areas, but using this smaller brush to get in the small details. Notice on the roof tops as well, you sometimes get these little chimneys and stuff like that. So I will actually put in a bit of indication of some of that stuff. A little bit of detail on the on the um, buildings now. Just drop in some dark colors and areas to indicate maybe some little details of the windows and that kind of thing. Okay. I'm not a big fan of this middle dome. It's kind of just disappeared off into nothing, but we'll stick with it. Okay. Um, with the water as well, I'm just going to put in maybe a few uh, of these sharper bit sh uh, sharper waves on top. So tiny little sharp waves like this on top just to keep it interesting often with watercolors when you you have to layer things over to make it um, look more detailed, adding just layers and layers on top of other layers, and um, to a point where then everything s starts to take take shape. Okay. All right. So we are almost we're almost there, really. Um, so just like you've painted the buildings in the background as well. Just like you painted the buildings in the background, you can go over the boats. So, probably just going to get a bit of blue in these boats. A bit of blue. Here. Just in this gondola, like that. Um, a bit more here. This this one here, maybe the one here as well. Okay. You know, you've got this guy sort of just standing, standing on the gondola. Um, you can put use a different color on that person. I might use a bit of like blue, bluish color for that person here. Just a bit, just a bit of blue in there, like that. Oops, too much. It's just gone all over the place. Doesn't matter. Okay. I think what I'll do now also is just get in like all the really dark areas um, with the these kind of like pylons in the water, like these wooden thingos. So I could just go all the way through like that. And it's really dark, um, kind of like a dark brown color, which I've picked up. So, um, dark brown. They've also got a reflection in the water. It's kind of like reflection like that. Uh, 
often put a little bit of darkness at the bottom of the boats. That helps to uh, make them look like they're sitting right on top of the water. So a little bit of darkness underneath like that. And some more indications of these wooden uh, wooden poles. Just put them in quickly. Try to just use like one brush stroke and just go that's one, that's one, that's whoops. Sorry, too big, but one there, there, um all across in the distance. There's smaller ones as well, so you can just sort of get some in there. And this sort of um this sort of effect just helps to create a sense of depth in your painting uh, so that you've got objects in the foreground, objects in the background that are smaller as well. I can go on there with my brush now. Let's see. I can put in some windows, really dark, a few little splotches of color in there for windows and stuff. Here especially there's like some, uh, what you call it, these little openings from the buildings, like that. Little windows, tiny little windows, just one brush stroke. That's a window. That's a window. Just just tap that brush onto the paper with the the darkest sort of colour you can find. Just indicating. Um, I like to put in some birds as well. Sometimes I just pick up the, the brush and just put it a few little kind of these birds in the sky like almost like V shapes in the sky like that. Sometimes the birds will hang around the top of the towers and stuff as well. So putting a few in there, they, that helps just to indicate something going on. Um, I, I find the birds also help to connect the sky onto the rest of the painting. Some little, I don't want to overdo it, but a bit more, a few smaller one in the distance. If I got some weird inconsistencies as well, I kind of just turned them into birds. Like I got these, <laughs> these it's kind of like working with your mistakes. <laughs> I got these weird bubbles that have just popped up here. I don't know what to do with them, so I'll just turn them into birds and it looks better. Okay. I think I'll do some more with the water. Some more. Um, maybe a few, just re-wet that area a little bit and just drop a bit more, a few more brush strokes in here.
I'm putting in a few more of these poles and stuff. I just I feel like I need something else running through that side, so I put another one here. That. Um. The chimneys and stuff on the rooftops. Okay. I got a bit of this stuff. It's, uh, Called, it's just white paint, like white gouache. And what I do with this is that I sometimes put some highlights on the buildings, little bits of white. I'll just pass it around to you guys in a second. But just little, little highlights kind of thing.